Hey everybody, and welcome back once again to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman. I'm the pastor at Valley Christian Fellowship in Longview, Washington. And today, John chapter 14, we find another disciple with another question about Jesus and his words that are meant to be words of comfort as he explains that he is going to prepare a place for them. But now his disciples, they're, they're, there's just so much curiosity. You know, yesterday we saw that Thomas is like, Jesus, we don't know where you're going, so we, we don't know the path to get there. We don't know the way. And then we get these incredible words where Jesus, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Well, today we're going to, we're going to get another, uh, another question. You see, Jesus ended up yesterday talking about how seeing the Father is seeing him, and knowing him is knowing the way to the Father. Well, Philip has a question about that today. And so let's jump into our text, John chapter 14, starting in verse 8. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Lord, show us the heavenly Father. Give us, do something even more amazing than your other miracles. Let us have this, this bulletproof kind of vision of who God the Father is. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Jesus' response here, he says, look at all that I've done. You've been spending so much time with me. Look at me, Philip. Look at the life that I've lived. Look at my teaching. Look at my miracles. Look at how it all points to who I am as the divine, eternal Son of God who made all things. Just like, just like a, a biological child bears the attributes of his father. You say, oh, that, that kid's a chip off the old block, right? Jesus is saying, look at me. You know the father because you've been with me. Well, let's look at the next text. Verse 10. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on the count of the works themselves. He, look at what Jesus says here. Jesus is saying, look, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Look, the Father and I, we are one. Now, you almost feel sorry for Philip here because Jesus here is describing his, his divinity. He's describing this, this idea of the, the triune nature of God, which is, uh, let's just, just be honest, can be a little bit um, vexing in our mind at times because this truth, it teaches very clearly that there is one God. But the God exists in three persons. God the Father is spoken of as God. God the Son is revealed as divine and eternal as God. And God the Spirit we know is God. So we have this triune God. The scripture, scripture speaks of Father is God, the Son is God, and the, the Spirit of God. And the scripture also speaks of one and only one true God. And so here Jesus is saying, look, we are completely united. The Father is in me and I am in the Father. I, I don't do anything besides what, what the Father instructs me to do because we are completely and in total, we're in complete and in total unity. Verse 11, he says, believe me that I am the, in the Father and the Father is in me. And he says, or else believe on account of the works themselves. He says, if this is kind of difficult for you to understand, just look at what I have done. Look at how my signs point to my identity as the divine, eternal creator, the one who is king of kings and lord of lords, the son of God, the son of man, and the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Look at what I've done. Believe those works and believe in me. So with Thomas yesterday, he says, we don't know where you're going, so we don't know the way. And Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And now Philip says, well, show us the Father and we'll, we'll, we'll have it all figured out. And Jesus says, look at me and you will see the Father. Because I am in the Father and the Father is in me. We are completely and totally united. This is, this is a great truth. Do you realize when you have Christ, you have all of God, Father, Son, and Spirit. You realize just as as. The Father was in the Son and the Son was in the Spirit. Now, by the indwelling 
indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are now present with us all, all the time. This is meant to be a, a word of comfort from Jesus to his disciples as he prepares for his death. And this word of comfort is really a word that shows us that Jesus is in perfect unity with the Father. Now, what, what does this mean for you today is the ancient way for our modern day. Well, I think this, first of all, can give us great comfort knowing that Jesus and the Father and the Spirit are totally and perfectly united. There is never any disagreement among them. There is never any tension among them. And remember, it's the Father who holds us, and it's Jesus that holds us, and it's the Spirit that seals us, which means because they are completely united, and they are united in showing their love to you, and you have received that by faith, this means that you are completely secure. It's like Philip says, show us the Father. Jesus says, I have. Look, when we say, God, will you show us yourself? God says, I have. I have given you Christ. When you have him, you have all that you need. So brother or sister in Christ, today I just want you to, I want you to take heart. I want you to find comfort. I want you to remember that when you have Christ, you have all you need because Christ is the image of the invisible God. That in Christ we have salvation and in Christ we have access to the Father. This is meant to comfort our hearts, to give us courage to continue in the faith. And this is our ancient way for our modern day.